and I had matching with it and whatnot. And as a sole proprietor, if I just use a normal IRA, I have much less of a tax benefit. I'm restricted on how much I can put in there. Well, then the typical question is be, well, could I set up a 401k plan for my sole proprietor business so I can put more money into the, the into my account and also possibly help employees, right? But that's too complicated oftentimes for a sole proprietor. So, the, so these simple, the SEP and the simple are types of plans that could increase your ability to put money into a plan more similar, giving benefits more similar to a 401k, but that are easier to administrate than a 401k. So that's a whole nother topic uh, in and of itself that you can kind of dive into. What's the difference between a SEP, a simple, uh, a 401k or solo 401k and when would those be best for like a sole proprietor type of business. So these plans, but if you if you have those plans set up, then then you know then instead of just having an IRA deduction, you might be able to deduct the SEP and the simple rather than on the Schedule C, you put in it on the Schedule One, uh, the Schedule One. But in order to qualify for those plans, you typically have something like a Schedule C type of business, a sole proprietor. So these plans allow you to save for retirement while per, while po potentially reducing your tax income through contributions. All right, accept plans. So what are they? These allow contributions of up to 25% of your net earnings from self-employment uh, with a maximum of 66,000 for 2023. That is far higher then of course the maximum you can put in if you're just gonna say, all right, I'll just put money into an IRA because I don't have access to a 401k plan because I'm not an employee, right? So that's a huge benefit. SEP plans are relatively easy to set up with a simple one page form or through an IRS approved quote, prototype SEP plan uh, from financial institutions. So they're pretty easy to do. That's the point. They're easier than a 401k plan. You just wanna make sure that you're following the rules properly uh, so that you're in compliance. Then you have the simple IRA plans. So for 2023, you can contribute all your net earnings from self-employment up to 15,500. So you can see some differences between the limits here of the two, plus an additional 3,500 if you're uh, 50 or older. And uh, you have the option of either a 2% fixed contribution or a 3% uh, matching contribution. So you can go into the differences between a simple and a SEP. One of the other benefits, by the way, is that you might be able to think about your SEP contributions after you actually do your taxes. Meaning, how would I know to, uh, that I'm gonna put in 25% until I actually do my taxes, which is gonna happen after the tax year. For 2023 tax year, I'm gonna do my taxes in 2024. It would be nice if I can do my taxes and then figure out how much or top off at least the amount that I'm going to put into the SEP because now I know how much I could put into it, right? So that's another thing to take into consideration when you're comparing these plans. Are you allowed to put money into it after the tax year so that you can figure out the, pr the, the, the best amount to put into it? So then we have the solo 401k plan. So these plans allow annual uh, salary deferrals up to 22,500 in 2023, plus an additional 7,500 if you're 50 or older on a pre-tax basis or as designated Roth contribution. So you can also contribute up to an additional 25% of your net earnings from self-employment for total contributions of up to 66,000 for 2023, including salary deferrals. So this one usually gives the highest amount of benefits a 401k plan, but also is the most complex to set up and takes the most administrative work. So the contributions you make to these plans can be deducted on your tax return, specifically on Form 1040 Schedule 1 under the line for self-employed SEP, simple and qualified plans. It's important to ensure these contributions are not mistakenly deducted on Schedule C. This is where the Schedule C once again gets a little confusing because now you're like, well, wouldn't that deduction be on the Schedule C? Well, no, it's on the Schedule 1. So you have to know that. So as this could require an amendment if you do it wrong. So to navigate this, the specifics, now you might ask why is it on Schedule 1, by the way, 
uh, because the Schedule C, notice if you put it on the Schedule C, it would reduce your bottom line on the Schedule C and would have an impact on the self-employment tax, right? By putting it on Schedule 1, then it's going to reduce your federal income taxes, but possibly not have an impact. You're still going to be paying self-employment tax on, 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 on those earnings, right? Okay. So to navigate, and this is similar to the difference on the W-2 between like Box 1 and Box 3 for the federal income tax wages versus box three social security wages and box five medicare okay so to navigate the specifics of each plan and to determine which is most suitable for your circumstances as well as understand contribution limits and tax implications you can refer to the irs publication 560 on the irs website quick look at the line instruction self line 16 self-employed step simple and qualified plans if you were self-employed or a partner you may be able to take this deduction you can see publication 560 or if you were a minister publication 517